My name is Michelle Chitamber. And you work for a very, very cool name company. I do. I'm technology futurist at Spider9. Spider9. You are, say that again. What is your role? I, I am the technology futurist at Spider9. I love it. Okay. Spider9. Okay. And you make these batteries. We make energy storage systems, so we don't make the battery cells themselves. Uh, we couple those systems with, uh, we have a unique software and controls architecture. Um, so we basically make the cells last longer, we get more energy out of them, and we decrease the cost of energy storage systems by around 40%. Just by the way you put them together? Just by the way we put them together and by the way we cycle the cells, we're intelligently managing every cell in the system. Um, so we utilize it to its, you know, its maximum capacity and that helps to really decrease the cost of the system and just improve the way that the, um, that the system runs. So that's and, why and they last longer. And, and how fast is the cost of these systems coming down, would you say? Oh, it's coming down pretty rapidly. There's, there's a couple different um, tracks. A lot of people tracking uh, energy storage industry look at the cost of cells, which um, cost of cells is about usually around half of the cost of a total energy storage system. So cells themselves are supposed to come down in price by, I believe, a factor of two over the next decade or so. Um, the supporting systems um, will also come down in cost, and that's less well documented how quickly that will happen. But overall, I think um, the cost of these systems will go down by 40 to 50 percent over the next decade. Really? 40 to 50 percent in the next decade? And yeah. these cells are starting to be used with people who have uh, solar on their rooftop. Yes, yes. Um, you can put them in residential installations. This is a little bit bigger system than you would use for residential. Um, this would be more of a commercial scale uh, installation, but we also have residential products. Uh, but yes, you can couple this with a, uh, with a rooftop or a um, you know, standalone solar field and uh, essentially store energy when the sun is producing it and use it when the sun isn't producing it. So that's during cloud cover, that's at night, uh, that's to um, you know, manage any sort of grid interruptions and it gives you um, actually higher power quality than you would see from the grid and then you're using your own clean energy. Um, do you think that people will eventually be able to store energy and then feed it back onto the grid? Yes, yes, and that's something um, that's something that uh, right now is, is still developing. You know how utilities want to manage that is certainly something different, but it would um, certainly be to the benefit of utilities to be able to um, not have energy come onto the grid only when the sun is shining. You know, if they could have some energy come on when the sun is shining, some when it's not, that's a lot easier for them to manage than having everyone peak at the same time when, when the sun is shining. So it's, right, it's they can manage could, the load. Yeah, it, right. it could be very useful to utilities. Uh, right now, the utilities are still trying to figure out how to best manage that uh, so that it doesn't exacerbate the problem, um, which, is, which is smart of them to do. Cool.